great you know great uh, catching up with you after long you know that i would like to go back in time and uh, probably look at the entire journey which you have had in uh, so to say uh, i mean uh, in the banking career as well because i knew you made the switch from banking to venture debt so uh, i mean in terms of uh, a career progression also i know it can be something like a valuable lesson for our audience so if you could just go back in time and uh, let us know how the transition happened for you sure it's an interesting question <laughs> i haven't thought about that for some time <laughs> so i have been doing i've uh, been working for 20 years now i actually started my career uh, as a brand manager in icic bank right? yeah. so I, i was actually into marketing um so i wanted to um do a lot more in the branding and marketing space so i spent about 3 3 and a half years in icic bank but i had the opportunity to switch between different roles and uh, spend some time in branding in the rural business team where i actually ended up learning a lot about real india or the okay. bharat story and okay. this is way back in 2004 okay uh, and moved to corporate banking okay. uh, mainly to get over my fear and ignorance of finance <laughs> so uh, while i done it i learned in the courses in finance and uh, i realized that You know, it's not something that uh, is tenable. Mm-hmm. So in 2006, I actually moved to Citibank, and uh, there I joined the corporate banking team. I was managing uh, large corporates in auto, healthcare, and consumer, yeah, uh, as well as media. So it was an interesting set of uh, companies that I was kind of managing in terms of relationships. But this was still conventional banking, right? So ICICI okay. gave me a little bit of breadth in terms of uh, different kinds of roles. So. city was a very sophisticated uh, you know bank and uh, you have a cross border uh, flavor to the transactions that you do yeah but it was still the conventional world mm-hmm. so in 2008 as uh, and, and a lot of this across my journey has been uh, serendipitous i would say mm-hmm. i'd actually agreed to move to chennai as part of the corporate banking team in the summer of 2008 this was okay. pre lehman you know uh, it was a different time in banking Uh, and on the 24th of July 2008, because that used to be the Wi-Fi password, uh, Silicon Valley Bank got its NBFC license. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Two more weeks, and I would have moved to Chennai, and mm-hmm. uh, you know there would have been a different situation altogether. But because it happened at that point, um, I had the good fortune to actually join SPP um, and uh, as part of the founding team for the India business. Right. Now. When I left city, everybody around me thought, you know, it's such a bizarre move, right? Like, who leaves city bank? Mm, yeah. Uh, in about three months' time, it turned out to be the best decision of my life. Okay. Yeah, because the entire conventional financial world was in turmoil, and uh, I spent some time in the Bay Area. Uh, SVB was well capitalized uh, in India. Mm. It was uh, newly minted in BFC, and we basically had a license to. and and kind of grow the book here so that phase was the next 6 years and uh, in an you asked that question earlier what the transition felt like yes so if you look at the conventional world of debt a lot mm-hmm. of it comes down to just understanding pre cash flows uh, assets uh, the vintage of businesses big promoter groups the larger the better yeah. uh, people who've done this for decades mm-hmm. and then you look at startups and is the exact opposite absolutely right? so it took some time i would say uh, it took a lot of unlearning uh, and relearning mm-hmm. but the at the heart of it uh, i think the aspect which fascinated me was uh, concept of entrepreneurship i mean i always wanted to at some level do something on my own i didn't have an idea uh, i didn't know what it was that i wanted to do so i kept learning and learning and learning and uh, you know venture debt for me was one more uh, avenue uh, to explore the entrepreneurial bug right and uh, it was also a puzzle that looked impossible to solve how do you provide debt to a company which is inherently non profitable mm-hmm. low assets no vintage you don't have promoters but founders so it went against the grain of everything that conventional debt stood for correct and so felt and that's that's kind of my personality as well i just like puzzles and uh, difficult the more difficult the puzzle the better okay so uh, that that was a trigger as well 
And Vinod, I mean, uh, the best of startups uh, you have worked with and supported throughout, I mean, uh, at what stage do you think uh, they would come to you uh, to look for venture debt financing? So there's a lot of things working. Um, I think there have been a, a lot of learnings along the way on business building and the markers around success. Okay. Uh, you know, for say a consumer brand or a BD platform or a fintech, you know, lending engine. Being able to benchmark that over cycles has been uh, quite useful. The fact that you know I was still doing this six years ago, nine years ago, twelve years ago mm-hmm. allows for some benchmarking across you know different cycles and saying you know what happened at different points of time, and some it just helps in having some early warning signals. That early warning signal I think has helped uh, both founders and us. Uh, in avoiding a lot of issues. At the end of the day, I think it's good intent, hard execution, uh, you know, being there, rolling up your sleeves, which the founders do, right? Mm-hmm. And our role is a little bit on the on the periphery, I would say. Yeah. Right. But sometimes it's just about calling uh, an alarm bell a little bit earlier mm-hmm. or in guiding founders through you know what has happened before. Uh, and that kind of context helps in um, avoiding certain problems. So considerable landings, and I think it's every day um, and it's a constant process, I would say. I mean, and also just to uh, simplify things for, uh, I mean, uh, since many of our viewers, of course, uh, would uh, want to understand better in terms of whether they want to go for equity financing or they want to go for debt financing. Can you simplify the two for uh, our viewers? If you build good quality businesses, driven by good quality revenues and a, a you know a strong gross margin, not spending too much on marketing, everything falls into place. Right, and that should be the objective. And uh, I mean, uh, lastly, a piece of advice from you to um, in I main founders who are seeking financing in current times. Uh, see, this is not an easy market to raise capital, uh, but. Those are also the opportunities where uh, strong execution comes through. So we have seen this uh, in the last 12, 18 months when there's been 12 months at least there's been a bit of a funding pullback in some sense. But we've also seen amazing companies uh, actually break through and get funded at this time. So it's not a deal not happening. Mm-hmm. There is capital waiting to go into deserving companies, be it equity or debt. We have our highest velocity ever right now. And actually, even equity investors' uh, velocities come back, right? So I would say to founders, one is focus on execution. Mm-hmm. Uh, for young companies, prove out PMF, focus on unit economics, and ensure that the story stacks up, right? And then focus on scale. Uh, you know, not to put the cart before the horse. For growth stage uh, entrepreneurs. I think they need to have uh, more resilience, uh, you know, prepare for longer time frames where mm-hmm. fundraising takes time. They've already got uh, reasonably sized, uh, scaled businesses. Then you need to have more options, create more avenues in terms of capital uh, solutions. Ensure that the business has many, uh, uh, how do I put it? There's many doors that are opening up for the business in terms of capital, right? It's going to take time to raise the money. I think that's true for almost all companies right now. But this is also the time that differentiation is easily visible. So, on that positive note, I'll conclude the conversation. Thank you so much for taking out time, Vinod, and talking to us at Entrepreneur Media today. Uh, my pleasure, Veda, and thank you for giving me uh, this opportunity. And look forward to doing more with you and your team. Sure. Thank you.